Yo, 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 yo. Welcome to the Rocket City Network. Today, we are going to be discussing critical racial theory. Fellas, I want to start off with Courtney. All right. Courtney, do you believe as an educator, CRT should be taught in schools? If yes, then at what grade level? Um, definitely it should be taught in schools. I think the grade level should be um, beginning maybe fifth grade on up. Uh, it's important because if we're telling people, if we're, if we're telling kids in this country uh, that, you know, that we all are part of this country, we need to tell kids how this country got, got started. What, what events took place no matter how hard they may be, um, you know, my, no matter how hard they may, they may be to go back and revisit. It, it, it may be dark, it may be gruesome, but we need to learn from our past, right? If we learn, everybody always says, if we have to learn from our past to move forward. That's true. And uh, a lot of individuals haven't been taught things. Like look how big the, the, the Tulsa race, race massacre, right? individuals i never learned that in high school mm -hmm. i was never taught that in high school mm -hmm. people are hearing about it now because of juneteenth and and the documentaries mm -hmm. and the celebration of the, the anniversary of that and so i think it's important that if we're building or we're instilling kids values beliefs and everything else for the next generation then they need to be taught the truth it doesn't need to be covered up kids are being lied to about how America was established. So I think it's very important. Uh, John, what's your take? Uh, I, I agree 100%. I mean, um, as far as the grade level uh, of which it should begin, I, I mean, that's kind of hard to say because uh, who can say when racism began? Mm. You know, and, and I think that I to glaze it over and, and try to make America or paint America as this country where these, these gentlemen had this idea of we didn't want to live under this rule anymore and it could be better this way. <laughs> and this glorious painting of these men sitting at this table, signing this paperwork and doing these things and not really showing what this country was built off of. And I think that's a, a travesty in itself. I mean, you can't teach one side of history. You know, to me, that's, that's, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're asking for the, they say history repeats itself. Okay. So you teach the wrong that was done to avoid uh, that repeat. You know, I just, I think it's a, it's a must. Now, not only in schools, it should be taught in, uh, in businesses, you know, I think, you know, when you have an HR class, it should be part of that. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's not a it's not a wound that's healed after 400 plus years. You know, it's, it's a, an infected wound, you know, an infected wound never truly heals. You may scab it over, but as soon as you bump it, that pus starts to eat, starts to ooze out of it again. You know, so I definitely I think uh, from the military down you know, everywhere. It, it can't be, you know, it, it, to me, it's almost like they're saying, you know, just forget about it. Yeah. Get over it. You know, you know, we, we, that's been said to black people for the longest, yeah. you know, just get over it. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no. James. Yeah, that's it. Oh, go ahead. Finish up, brother. Nah, you good, bro. I was just saying, yeah, that's my take on it, you know. <laughs> James, what do you what do you believe? Uh, <clears throat> I'm just sitting there listening to good. I mean, when I heard a critter of race theory and everything else, is I believe it should be taught more like in the middle, maybe middle high school, but folks gonna be tripping about that one. So I'm kind of like it's basically should be a history class and everything else. And it's just, a, should be part of that little history thing. So it's a theory. Uh, professionally, I kind of don't want to hear it in, in the, unless it's somebody from HR orientation, but that's about it going for retail. 
Got you. Um, my take is, I believe somewhere around the high school age, because for one, there's, <laughs> it's a, it would be a lot for a, a first grader to, to consume. <laughs> Most first graders believe that the tooth fairy is real and Santa Claus is real. Mm. You know, middle schoolers, they believe that Christmas is on December 25th. Now there are some adults who believe that as well. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I think around the high school age around that time, because that's where you, you, you really start seeing the diversity in thought, right? I know I saw it with my son, um, around the, the 10th grade level. Um, as far as professionally, I, I think, like you said, John, uh, military, definitely, because there are some people in the military <laughs> until they get to basic training, they've never seen a black or an Asian or Hispanic person. Wow. Right. That's a true statement. <laughs> you know, um, I'm pretty sure you probably met some people, John, in, in a basic training who y'all, you probably were their, their first black friend, you know? So, uh, another thing is too, I don't believe that people understand what, critical race theory is. Uh, basically, and I, I'm going to read off this, uh, critical race theory is an academic concept that is more than 40 years old. The core idea is that racism is a social construct and that it is not merely the product of individual bias or prejudice, but also something embedded in legal systems and policies. Um, I think that is very spot on with the definition. Um, <laughs> I think back to the movie that, I, that we just did a recap on, Lean On Me. That first scene, Joe Clark, he was actually teaching racial critical theory to that all-white class. And uh, that's, one, that's one of the reasons why I believe that movie is so powerful, so great. Um, so for me, I'm leaning towards the, the high school level. Um, another thing, too, is I think a lot of our outrage as black people about this whole topic is that we have to understand that we have to teach our, our own children, yeah. you know, our nieces and nephews history, right? You can't depend on the public school system no. to do that. You I know? agree. Um, so I, w I graduated from HBCU. And a lot of times people believe that if you go to an HBCU, you pretty much know everything about black history which is false because it all depends on what your major is so my major was political science minor in business uh, management and criminal justice so i was taking courses that were different than some of my peers who were doing engineering and and some of the other agricultural uh business majors so i got to read black literature i got to to listen to slave narratives i got to read nat turner so um, I see it on social media. A lot of people who went to HBCUs, they're complaining about the school system not teaching enough black history, or they're saying, well, why didn't I know about Juneteenth? At what point do you do you take some responsibility and, and do for yourself and learn for yourself? Because every school in America has a library. Every city in America has a library. We live in Huntsville, Alabama, right? The Deep South, home of the Confederacy, right? Huntsville has a huge library mm. and they have a huge section that has African American literature. Why are people still complaining about not learning this in school? Walk your, your ass down to <laughs> downtown and go check out a book. That's, that's my take on it. So James, um, I know you said recently that you don't believe that it should be taught in the professional world. Um, how did you come to that conclusion? I mean, I was, I put it this way. I said it not should be taught. I mean, it should be like some like an orientation, like a light orientation, more like a, to avoid all these stereotypes and everything else. That's just about it. So I disagree with that um, because a lot of times when we learn an orientation at any job, we forget within two weeks. All we worried about is that is how much we getting paid and when we get paid, right? Mm -hmm. As you progress in your career and you're in whatever industry you're, you're in, you're going to start seeing red flags. There might be situations where 
you might train somebody that's been in the, the, the industry five years less than you, but then you look up next year, they're a higher grade than you. You see what I'm saying? So I, I believe it's, it's one of those things that uh, definitely in the military, it, it, it should be a continuous learning, right? That That's my take on it. John, um, what's your take on that? Oh, well, well uh, James, go ahead and uh, I know you probably wanted to refute that. No, I'm not reviewing that. It was just the same thing I was saying. It's more like an orientation refresher learning type thing. You get like no annual training. Okay. Like every damn time. That's what I was meant by that one. I arguing okay. against you. Oh, okay. I I I know, man. It's, it's all good. Um uh John, what do you think about in the professional world? I, I think definitely it needs to be included in uh in in uh, any newcomer brief somewhere um, as far as something because as far as something that needs to be you know on a regular reoccurring basis um, maybe annually or something like that because and, and then that kind of still are you even addressing the problem because you can know you have an issue and still overlook it mm-hmm. you know I mean that's I, I think that's a, a big reason why America is in the state that it's in now. You know, we know this problem exists, but we we won't talk about it. You know, we won't address it. We won't bring it up. You know, we'll eventually, hopefully, they'll forget about it or or we can get past it. But um, it's not something that's going to go away. So it, it would definitely have to be something that's reinforced. But then you'll get pushback for that from people who, you know, who feel like, okay, they already have affirmative action. They already have this. They already have that. You know, let's. They got enough. No, we don't have enough. Mm. You know, and I and I have to agree. And I hate to say this, and and I've said it before. I I, I love America. I wouldn't want to let Uncle Sam has afforded me the opportunity to travel and see the world, and all the places I've been. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else but here. But this current system. And the way that it was it was set up and built to operate, I mean, anyone saying that they don't see how it's set up or how or who it benefits, it, it should be the first one sitting front row in the first, you know, critical race theory class that they can get into. You know, I just it it, it it's amazing that in 2021 we're still having a discussion of you know, should black people or not even black people, should anyone, I don't want to put a race on because if you're not white in America, you have experienced some kind of racism. And and for them to feel like this system in this country was built uh, with others included, you know, is... I don't know, man. It's a, it's a, like you said, it's, it's definitely a subject where it's going to have to be ongoing, but how long does it have to go on? You know, how long do we have to sit here and continue to, you know, uh, bark or how long do we have to sit here and cry about something that they have historical fact on? You know, how do we have, why do we have to prove your history to you? Hmm. Mm. Hey, that's that's real. Uh, Courtney, um, as an educator or just as a American citizen, why do you believe people don't want critical racial theory to be taught in schools? Because they fear that the, the truth will finally be uncovered. Mm. Like, listen, man, Fox, Fox News. And all these conservative shows, shows they prove to us every day why critical race theory is needed. <laughs> they, they show us every day. Like, I mean, brother, I was watching uh, on Twitter. I, um, I follow this page called Right Wing Watch. And Tucker Carlson, who's like the mm-hmm. face of white supremacy right now on Fox News, had a gentleman on there discussing the military. And they were saying how, well, they were mad because... I forget the general's name, but he he was he was uh, went before Congress last week and was Admiral, saying, uh, Gil Day. Yeah, yeah. He was saying how I'm a white man and I want to under I want to understand white rage as a white male in America, right? Yeah. That was Austin and Millie. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So, so Tucker goes on, has a guest on his show and they're talking about the military has been colorblind for the last 200 years. Really? <laughs> really? The last 200 years? So, and, and see, stuff, statements like that it's crazy Prove to you why we need critical race theory because he can just throw something out there like that and this and the fox news watchers will eat that up or they will bring a black person on there who will say um i've never been oppressed i've accomplished this i've accomplished that there's no racism in america when they prop these negroes up like this man that's a slap in the face to to our ancestors because yes. you mean to tell me um, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Fannie Lou Hamer, all mm-hmm. these individuals that came before us who are no longer walking this earth, they didn't they didn't live that, what we're talking about now? You yeah, feel me? So, so, so it's important that the truth is out there, but people will hide it because they're scared of uh, of, of how their children <laughs> will, 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 will view this country. They're afraid that somehow this will push black people that we will somehow leap them in education and wealth gap and all of that. No, we still have a ways to go, but critical race theory is important because if, if it's taught and if people would, 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 would sit down and, and have a conversation about it, then we can see how we can move forward. But the lies being told about it, that's the problem is that you have white people who are in power who don't want to lose control of the power structure that 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 John just stated that they that they they built and they don't want to lose that position where they are right now. Yeah, um, it's crazy, and I want to address what Tucker Carlson said that the military has been colorblind for over two hundred years. Mm-hmm. So you mean to tell me he's never heard of the Buffalo Soldiers, the Harlem Hellfighters, the Fifty Fourth Massachusetts <laughs> Brigade? Yes. Come on. Um, I mean, and, and, and colorblind. I mean, the the military just integrated, what, in, in 19, what, 40, 46, 47? Mm-hmm. 47. Most of our parents were born in the, the 50s and the 60s. Mm-hmm. We've known our grandparents. You know, so you mean to tell me that the that you believe it was colorblind, but it only became integrated during my grandparents' lifetime listen you know exactly and 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 didn't the military i don't know um but didn't the military a couple years ago they were battling over um how black people were wearing their hair in the military yes Uh, yes. yeah like like, that was just like that was like a couple years it was like you know whatever but so i'm like when when you make blanket statements like that tucker carlson Like, I just hate I just hate that Fox News has this platform where they allow these individuals to spew foolishness without being fact checked or corrected in their in their stupidity. Yeah. And, and you know, with me, right, I'm I'm a history buff. So uh, with this critical racial theory, they don't realize that that all kind of books can be added to the recommendation list. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, if you uh, I give you Chancellor Williams, The Destruction of Black Civilization. You can give me the uh, a pro-slavery book, Negro Abyss. I will read that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm one to, to, to believe that um, in order for me to understand my position, I have to understand my opponent's position. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, why, that's why I'm undefeated <laughs> against these conservatives because <laughs> I know all their talking points. Listen. You know what I'm saying? And and the, and, the, and what what I've noticed too, right? So I have a, a quite a few conservative friends. Mm-hmm. They're actually open to the to the idea. Now these are different conservatives. I, they 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 don't toe the party line. Right. Um, they are actually open to gaining more knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I wonder how it's going to be across the nation because <clears throat> you might have some conservatives who will give you pushback, but there's, but there's also liberals mm-hmm. who will give pushback mm-hmm. too. Um, but with, with all that being said, I still believe that it's up to parents mm. to go above and beyond the curriculum to teach their kids things. Yep. Teach your, your, your child about the Chinese Exclusion Act. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Teach your kids about the Holocaust. Go more in depth, right? So I think that parents have to kind of take a role, not just bashing 
you know, critical racial theory, but just embracing America, you know, mm. because we just celebrated Juneteenth as a nation uh, last week, right? For the first mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Uh, me and John had this discussion. There was a lot of people that looked like us on the panel. They never heard of Juneteenth up until maybe last year. Mm. And that is a travesty. Mm -hmm. That is a travesty. Oh. A lot of that has to do with the talented 10th, right? We all know who the talented 10th was, right? Mm -hmm. You had these people in the 1920s and 30s during the Great Migration. They came from Texas. You know what I'm saying? They came from Mobile, Alabama, right? They chose to not celebrate these festivals because they were trying to assimilate. Hmm. They were trying to assimilate. They, they were ashamed of being the descendants of slaves. Mm -hmm. You still have that today. Mm -hmm. Only now are people more open, you know, to, to, to embracing the struggle. And what's crazy is you have that amongst all the different ethnic groups, right? Uh, you have people who, who were actually ashamed that they have German ancestry. Mm. You know, you have people who are ashamed that they're from Mexico, mm. you know, people from China. Well, you know, well, that's where my ancestors were, but we've been here since the 1800s. Okay. But still embrace that. Right. So, uh, I mean, it's like John was saying, it, this is a topic that is going to be, it's going to last forever. It seems, yeah. you know, um, John, what, what's your whole take on the, on this whole, um, uh, reasoning behind people not wanting to embrace critical racial theory. Um I I agree with with uh with what Courtney said. I think it has uh is rooted in uh people's fear of losing their position in life that they feel like they uh they're entitled to. You know, fear and uh a sh fear and I think they're ashamed to actually look at and to have what they've done be put in their face. You know, and I understand that uh, they make the point of, oh, what happened 150 years, but you continue to benefit and your, yes. your generations continue to benefit from your forefathers' original sin. And, and I think those who are pushing back the most right now are the, the children and grandchildren of those children who witnessed the lynchings and things like that when they were doing it. the degradation that was forced on people back then. I mean, they, they did it like it was a going to the fair, you yes. know? So I, I think to, to actually see, you know, where, you know, in the recent history where they've painted black people as these hooligans and we're the thugs and, and all we do is come in and ruin the, the area and this and that it, it's never been us you know we've been stereotyped and yes they they influence and some of us are weak to fall for that and become pawns of that system but um i think it's fear man i think they're really scared to look in the mirror and see what looks back at them uh james what's your take i actually agree with john that was just what I was going to say, but hey, you just took the word. First party said, you know, more than not really, it really is white. White man with his power and everything else is beneficial. So I yeah, just agree with that. That's, it should be taught. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the thing with history, there's always some inconvenient truths, right? Um, I believe I, I came whole when I was able to process the idea that that we played a, a part in our own degradation you know um because i understand the playbook that people will try to run when you have certain types of debates if you debate on slavery some people will say well you know africans sold their own into slavery i can accept that but on the flip side i can accept that but then still tell you the wrongs that happened once those people were brought to the new world and then what's been happening generation upon generation upon generation. Um, a friend of the show actually um, asked me was racism worse now than it was 30 years ago. Mm. And I had to ask him what, what is considered bad, you know, and 
uh, of course he had to, we, we had to end our conversation to come on, on the, the channel. So that's something I definitely want to kind of tackle too, because I think that people don't realize that, yeah, you know, we're not, you know, we have integration. Um, there's no outright open lynchings anymore. Um, but you still have some discrimination in, in, in certain in certain government sectors, certain private sectors, right? So I, I I just don't think that racism was done away with during the Great Society years, you know. So, uh, but yes, uh, final thoughts, uh, Corden. Um, I just you know as as we stated, man, I just think that. Uh, America as a whole need to face uh, the the atrocities and the and the, the dark times, like you said, the, the, the Chinese Exclusion Act, of course, slavery, Jim Crow, uh, Chinese internment camps, like all of these things, man. The Trail of Tears, like all yeah. of this stuff happened in this country to to people who were not white, even even Italians and Germans. When they came over, they were subjugated to some type of, of racism until they assimilated, mm -hmm. right? Italians and Polish and all these individuals. And mm -hmm. so America just needs to own up to what it's done in order for this country to move forward and heal. Now we know racism will never be eradicated from this from this world because unfortunately, or this country, because unfortunately, you have individuals who are gonna believe what they're gonna believe, right? They're always gonna believe that. Black people are inferior and this and that and, and all of that. But the truth still must be uncovered and taught um, no matter how hurtful it is. Definitely, definitely. Def uh, one other thing, what's y'all's take on these bojangling, buck dancing fools who uh, believe that people are race baiting with this whole critical race theory? Oh. Huh. Okay, John, John, what do you, you got to say about them? Oh, man. Uh, I, I don't know if it was so much race baiting, but I, I saw it kind of similar to what you were just uh, were on, and I'm I'm going to make sure I get his name right. Uh, I, I want to say Dr. Kenyon Bridges. I okay. saw a video posted by him, and, and uh, he, the way he twisted the whole uh, and and this is just my opinion. In my opinion, the way he twisted the what critical race theory is reminded me of exactly what uh, these Republicans, uh, these leaders who who are scared of it, exactly what they did. And his basically what he was saying is that by doing this and teaching this. We are teaching uh, black children, you know, or black people that you are inferior to this race who is progressing or who this system has been made to benefit. I think that's the biggest pile of human bullshit I have ever seen. Excuse my language. <laughs> you know, I just, you know, I mean... I'm way, I bet you he's got a picture with Trump on his mantle. Mercy. Because to to <laughs> to go that route, I'm like, bro, you can't even, you know, okay, if that's how you receive it, that's how you're gonna receive it. I don't see it as anybody. I see them addressing a systemic uh I see them addressing something that is in place and rooted in in our our nation, you know, and it's sad that it took this long for people to acknowledge it. You know, it, it's it's sad that, you know, it's sad that we have to still sit here and, you know, I'm not even gonna say fight for acknowledgement or fight for a place in a nation that we built off the sweat and blood of our ancestors and still continue to uh, contribute more than we receive you know so i just think um man it, it's 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 crazy i think man. we have to it's crazy i think we have to see them for what they are bro they have to, 
They doing they both jangling and buck dancing their asses off, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> so so Courtney, what hey, what you gotta say about these these jack leg folks? Man, listen, I I I I think I put a I, I put a um post up on Facebook um last week. I was like, why do we have these black folk who are so willing, who cap so hard for white supremacy? Like I just, I just don't understand it because it's like, bro, your ancestors were slaves too. Like, what, what are you? If, here, I know what it is. The, the money, the money is good. Like, that, that's what it is. It's, it's the money. The money is good, so good to you that you're willing to go on Fox News and you're willing to go on Twitter and just say all these things that you know are not true. And it's sad because the very people that you are uh, trying to appease, deep down, they don't like you. No. They don't like you. They will accept you because you are, you are putting your selfishness before the, 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 before the advancement of your people. And so they're willing to accept you. I saw a video, man, Malcolm X tore this guy up. It was like, they were, at, I don't know where they were, but this, this, this black guy was saying, basically, this was like, I don't know, I think it was in the, sometime in 1960. This black guy went on this uh, show and was basically saying that it was the colored man's fault for the position that he's in now. Man, Malcolm X came to him and ripped that brother a whole new and live on TV, man. And it's just like, I do not understand why, why, why some black people want to carry the mantle for racism against their own people. It, it's just mind boggling to me. It, it is mind boggling because the thing is, when you actually reach out to somebody across the aisle and you, there's a mutual respect, they'll have that dialogue with you. Mm -hmm. So you, so you, so I've, I've never had the bow jangling buck dance for anybody's favor, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can go to lunch with somebody. We can go back and forth about policies and, and history or whatnot. And, and I, I might upset them, but you know what? They still invite me out to lunch again yeah. and again and again because I'm giving them some knowledge and then they're giving me some knowledge, yeah. you know, and, and it, it is, it's good dialogue, you know, but um, a lot of these, these bow jangling, buck dancing, <laughs> step and fetch it persons, you know, they, they will mix lies and truth yeah. to confuse people. Right. You know what I'm saying? You have to be you have to be leery about people who they 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 love you when you're going hard on their kind of their narrative, right? But the minute you talk about, well, you know what? That's wrong. He he probably should have never did that that brother that way. What you talking about, man? You you you're not a conservative, you know. So they're 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 so scared of losing that conservative badge, you know, yeah. because that that conservative badge sometimes sets them apart from the rest of black folk. James, I want to bring you in real quick, brother, because I, I know you're probably one of the more conservative brothers um, on the show and on the channel. Um, what is your take on some people who look like us that are constantly out for the money, out for the fame to be different? Don't everybody want to be different? But, but at, what, at the detriment of what? I mean... I mean, you want to go by stereotypes. I think uh, most, I mean, the president think that um, black folks think alike. So I just buy that conservative badge who probably just want to be different and then walk but, the mile, same mile. But conservatives believe that too. Look, so, 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 so does, does that way of thinking transcend political parties? Somewhat, but most okay. conservatives don't even like Tucker Carlson. Based off what evidence? Oh, right. how, 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 how do you how do you quantify that? Because he is the highest rated uh, Fox News host. Yeah, but I don't watch him. There's a lot of. But you you might be an outlier though. Yeah, but I like Kennedy. You you like who? Well, Kennedy. Hold uh Oh, okay. Yeah. Female. I'm just checking. Her. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So you're so so you're so you're blinded by the legs and the hair and the face. So you hey. so you can easily be compromised, my brother. Hey man. 
Hey, hey but that's real that. though, man. Hey. But I did. <laughs> hey, I did watch that. Uh, AKA on there was on there for a long time on Fox though, on the five. Oh, okay. I can't think of her name right now, but she's bad as bad as hell. 